Welcome back to Wainwright Road YouTube family. I am so excited. Look at the price of this Zulu leaf wall art. Over $500, almost $600. We are going to hack this stuff for next to nothing. We're going to pay five or six dollars. We're going to dupe it. It's going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Stay tuned. I cannot wait to show you this one. That was my toe. Welcome to Waymart Road. Can't put that on YouTube. The first thing that I did was create my canvas. I used a piece of foam core from the Dollar Tree and some scrapbooking paper that had a canvas texture that I already had on hand. It's pink. I'm not going for pink, so we'll take care of that in the next step. But I wanted a ragged edge, so I tore some pieces just naturally, however they happen to end up, and made the outer edges kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Once I had that laid down flat, I used my paper cutter and I made some flat or even edge squares so that there were no tear, no torn edges, basically. And then I covered the middle in sort of an abstract configuration so that it looks, you know, haphazard on purpose. Once I had that completely covered, to my satisfaction, I went ahead and used a tiny little bit of hot glue in each of the corners to hold the paper down. I continued to apply the hot glue until I reached the bottom layer of the paper to secure the entire stack of paper to the foam core. And then I started to paint. I used a small amount of paint for each layer. I think it ended up taking about three or four coats. You just want to keep painting until you've covered up the color of your paper. Now, if you use white paper or an acru paper, whatever paper color you have on hand and it, it's fine, you don't need to paint it, then you can skip this step. You don't have to paint. It's not required for the project. In my case, the paper was simply the way wrong color, so I painted it. And I think I gave it a total of um, three or four coats. Um, did I already say that? I don't know. Um, but I love the layered look that this ended up giving it. You don't see it a whole lot. You can only see it kind of peeking through. The original piece did not have this, of course, because it was on its own actual canvas. But foam core is really smooth, and it, it didn't have that high-end artistic look that I was going for. Um, I did use my little drawing tool, emboss gun, in between each of the layers. Here we are after the second coat and you can see it's covering really well. I did not get it on film but I do believe I put one more coat on after this and it dried a lot flatter than it looks now. It's still wet and a little bubbly. Once you have completed prepping your canvas you can set that aside to dry thoroughly. And while that is drying we are going to go on a grass hunt. So clearly I don't have a Zulu tree or bush or whatever it is that the original piece is made out of. I don't know if Zulu is a tree. I don't know if it's a shrub. I don't know if it's wild grass. But I do know that I have some really beautiful golden grass growing on the far side of my little property wall that surrounds my house. And that's what gave me the idea to do this piece. So while I am trimming and collecting these beautiful pieces and this is the extent of my gardening ability is cutting these things down. Now is a good time to thank our hostess for this look for less challenge. The hostess of this playlist is Yami, your Latina next door. I've been watching Yami for probably two years now. I love what she does with pretty much everything. 
I've watched her transform her old house. I was with her watching when they bought their new fixer upper. I watched them put in their new floors made out of um, just sheets of wood. And I've watched them redo that laundry room that is now a pantry. And I've watched them you know, tear up carpets and poor Yami got so sick and you know I just I, I feel like I know her already and it's it's just such great fun watching her so if you have not seen her channel it is linked in the description box below my video and you have to go check her out she is so down to earth and just I'm, I'm fangirling I have to admit it I, I think she's fantastic and she includes the whole family you get to see her kids in the videos and her husband the engineer the Latino engineer um, is it's fantastic and um, I've been to her website too she has a great website so anyway visit her um, website or her her YouTube channel it's linked in the description box and uh, give her a shout out if you go to her from my video please tell her I sent you um, and I hope you enjoy everything that she does as much as I do. And there's also a link to the playlist for this challenge in the description box below because she invited just an open invitation anybody who wanted to put up a look for less um, video of a, a dupe of a high-end item. She invited anybody who wanted to participate to do so. And so there is a playlist and you can check out all kinds of really great things. And so that link is in the box below as well. So now that I have gathered all of my beautiful golden grass, I'm going to make my way through the jungles of Fort Clark Springs, Texas, and get back into the comfort of my air conditioning. And I managed to fill up that basket quite nicely. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to hairspray these items. We're going to just pull them out of the basket a little bit at a time, spread them out on the desk, and just hit them with some hairspray. The hairspray is pretty much just to keep everything from getting dusty. It just kind of contains the great outdoors to just the grass. The next step is to sort the grass into little bundles, and each bundle is going to be one swag, left and right side, in your final piece. So to do this, I was just eyeballing how thick I wanted the center to be, the center of the swag. And once I came up with, you know, the number of stalks that I thought that would be, I tried to be as consistent as I could as I was gathering them. So you can see me kind of looking through. I'm sorting out any pieces that don't match that may, might have little florets or something on it. And then I think I went like 10 or 12 stalks per little um, bundle. I sped this part up to 400 times speed mostly because it was a very time-consuming process and I wanted you to see at least one little section where I made you know five or six bundles. It took me probably an hour to an hour and 20 minutes to do all of the bundles and you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg here. I made way more than I'm showing on the screen. I made almost the entire basket. I didn't use them all, so I went a little bit overboard. It's kind of hit or miss. You just kind of have to guess how much you're going to need. And better to have too many than too few, certainly. And then once you've made all of your bundles, then you can move on to the next step, which is to actually create your swags. And speaking of swags, one of the biggest differences between my piece and the original is the um, creation or the construction of the swags themselves. The original was created using actual wire, copper wire, gold wire, silver wire. And I think that's where a lot of the cost comes from is because I think it's made with real gold. I mean, one would hope so with that kind of a price tag. I didn't have it on hand. If I'd had a jewelry making kit where I did have like gold, silver, bronze, copper wire, not you know 24 karat or anything but I would have used the wire I didn't have that on hand what I had was embroidery thread in the color scheme of my new bedroom so that's what I used either way would be fine and either way is going to keep the price way down of course 
So when we make our swags, the first thing we're going to want to do is trim off excess stock, which I used some just regular wire snips to do. Then you split it in half and you turn them so that the stocks meet in the middle like any other swag. Once I had it lined up evenly, I took a, just a tiny little dot of hot glue to start my thread. And then you just turn it. You just wrap it. I mean, this is pretty simple stuff. I tried it several different ways until I got into a groove. And this is the groove that actually served me best. And I'm doing this in real time instead of speeding it up specifically so that you can really get in there and see exactly what I'm doing. I'm not trying to wrap the, the thread in a, a really tight loop right off the bat. I'm letting it kind of crawl down the stock and then every few turns I'm pushing it back up against itself so that in the end, yes, the coil is very tight and you cannot see the stock through the coil, but I'm not killing myself trying to make sure that each thread butts up against the thread in front of it. That drove me crazy because I did try to do that the first few times and I realized I was, I was overthinking it. So just relax, throw on some TV, your favorite show, put on some music, whatever, and wrap away. It's going to take, it's going to take a minute. <laughs> You're going to wrap um, about 45 or so of these. And um, this piece is 20 inches by 20 inches. And I believe there was 47 actual pieces that I had to wrap and to make it exactly like the original. And I think I was one short when I was finished that I was missing one. And I was done, I was cleaned up. I had all of the little tiny cut pieces off of my floor and I was not going back. <laughs> so it had to be good enough. But you can see how they're spaced out and then I quit push them all back together. And it went pretty quickly. And once you get into a groove, it sh really shouldn't take you all that long. And then you snip. Oh, that one. <laughs> that had a little piece of stock poking through. And then you make sure it's good and tight. And you throw down a drop of hot glue. I tried to make sure that I was gluing it to close it off on the same side that I glued it to start with. And that will be the side that I glue to the mat so that you don't see any glue when you're looking at the art piece. That was my goal. Did I successfully accomplish that every time? I don't think I did, but I also didn't use glitter glue, so I think it, it, it came out okay. Other mediums that I used was um, twine. I used some of the uh, regular twine and I used some gold ribbon so that there was some metallic reflection there. Okay, now we're on to the fun part. We get to start creating the actual art piece. So in these frames, I am actually gluing the grass swags to our previously painted canvas. I wanted to show you that I didn't get every single piece exactly the same circumference. Some of them are larger, some of them are skinnier. I am kind of searching through my completed bundles to find colors that aren't necessarily um, the same color back to back, but in looking at the original piece, there were some duplications, so I didn't sweat it too much if the same color was right in a row. I tried to glue downward the pieces that, like where the glue was visible, and <laughs> that was Bing Crosby, he says hi. And yeah, they were a pain in my booty the entire time I was making this project. As I was applying it, I applying the, the swags, I did cut back the grass so that it was a little easier to manage. Once I had everything attached though, I went ahead and cut it down so that it was inside the actual canvas. And it was at this point that I could start to thin it. If you look at the original art piece, it is quite sparse at the ends and thicker toward the center. And I think that has to do with what Zulu grass is. I needed to kind of imitate that, but I really couldn't do it too much because I wasn't working with exactly the same material. I just kind of went in and gave it a haircut. I thinned it out some, didn't thin it out as much as I could have. Thank you. 
after the haircut's finished, I take a look at the top and or bottom, depending on how you look at it, section of the canvas that is off center because I didn't make quite enough of the swags to fill the entire space and I pull out my ruler <laughs> and I pull out my knife and I cut it down so my final product is not exactly 20 by 20 but it serves its purpose. Another difference between my project and the original is the frame. The anthropology version I can't even really tell from the picture if it has a frame and if it does it's a very light colored frame my room is more dusky it's you'll see in the final pictures that it's an african theme it's got a lot of sunset -y type colors and dark woods and things like that so i wanted the darker frame from the other picture from the high fashion website so i am using garden stakes that I found at Family Dollar for, or it might have been the Dollar General, for a dollar a piece. And they're just pointed on one end, you stick them in the ground and you let vines crawl on them. I think they're for tomato plants mostly. And I apologize to everyone in my community who needs them for their garden, but I pretty much clean them out as soon as they show up every year because they make excellent frames for projects like this. Um, I mark them to the exact amount that I need, the exact measurement. Um, and then I cut them on my miter saw and I glue all of the edges together. That way I'm never worried about messing up my measurements. I measure each side individually and I always get the perfect fit. And gotta love my, my little speed square there. It's literally the wall hanger I'm gonna glue to the back of this thing to hang it on the wall. It is so light, it is so lightweight that literally a piece of twine and a popsicle stick is all I need to glue to the back of this to hang it up. I am also using hot glue to attach the frame together. If it was going to hold something more substantial, um, like, I don't know, that pain in the butt cat that keeps jumping up on my work table, hello, Danny K. I would use wood glue and hot glue um, for that instant and long term hold, but I used hot glue alone and it has held up beautifully. It's very lightweight again and I don't move it very much, so it's fine. Um, once I have the entire frame glued together, then I'm going to hit it with some stain in the color Early American by Minwax. That is my go-to color that I put on everything in my home, so it all kind of matches by theme. I tell you, if you ever see me put any kind of a honey color stain on something, it is a signal that I'm being held against my will. So call the cops and send them to Wainwright Road because I will never put honey oak stain on anything. And if I buy anything with a honey oak color, rest assured, the sander will come out and it will get a fresh coat. Uh, I just, I can't even. Okay, so here I am staining and we're going to let that dry for just a few minutes because I'm only going to hit it with the one sanding. Now, to secure into the frame, um, it's foam core, so I'm going to, just make sure that it fits exactly right so it slips in nice and snug and then you see that little pile of craft sticks off to the side there watch what I do there I just put in a little bit of hot glue and I glue that stick in behind it perpendicular to the frame board so basically I'm making a little ledge that the canvas is going to rest on I do that on all four sides and then I use a pair of scissors to cut mitered corners and I do it to all four corners as well and that puppy isn't going anywhere. It is in there for good. Okay, let's take a look at some numbers. On the screen now you see both of the original versions, one from Anthropology with the lighter frame or frame, I can't tell which, for $528. The other is the high fashion for $160 with dark wood frame. Our DIY version consists of foam core for a dollar, did not use the sheet, embroidery thread for four dollars, did not use it all, garden stakes for four dollars, kind of used them all, and some of the other supplies like um, hot and some popsicle sticks for a total of ten dollars. The savings therefore are 518 to 650 dollars depending which version you like better and oh my gosh 
I love this on my shelf next to my djembe, next to my carved wood art, that beautiful sculpture of the woman smoking the pipe there on the left side is all the way from, I think, Nambia. I picked that up at a local sale here in Texas that the woman had traveled to um, Africa and, and bought it personally. And she was just, you know, getting rid of some things. She's older now and she's lightening her load. And oh my gosh, I love this piece. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and don't forget to visit the playlist for the rest of the look for less challenge videos that are posting today and thank you thank you again to Yami our Latina next door for hosting this challenge the way she has and um, thank you for letting me play in your sandbox and if you liked what you saw here today and would like to see more please hit that subscribe button and make sure you like and share this video so that YouTube will get the feeling that I'm doing something kind of right. Thank you.